Hi, it's Jane. <laughs> I'm just I'm just ringing because I have a really oddly specific question for you. We're at a mango farm in Queensland, and before I head out to learn all about how mangoes are grown and harvested and collected and all that stuff, I thought I'd ring you because as far as I'm concerned, you have a really great theory of mangoes, which is that you have one a year. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Can you explain that for me? Why do you just have the one every year? <laughs> well, it's, it, it goes back to when we were poor yep. and, we only had, and we only had chicken once a year. Okay. And we used to look forward to the chicken yep. once a year at Christmas. Yeah. But now chicken's available every day of the week and you don't sort of see it. It's just another meat. You don't have that anticipation. That's right. Yeah. And that, that's the same with mangoes. If you have them, if you have one every time you go to the shop, I think it just becomes another fruit. Yeah, you lose the joy. And, and like, you do. Yeah, like me, like I look forward to mango season because I adore mangoes. I love the time and thought that goes into this. I just don't have your self control. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Okay, no worries, Jane. Bye. Bye, Dad. Okay. Bye. 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 So that's my father in law explaining his theory of mangoes. I just don't have his self-control. And you need a test for that. I have no self-control when it comes to mangoes. No. Zero mango self-control. So God only knows what's going to happen when I get out amongst the trees. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. This is literally, and I hate using that word, but this is quite literally my idea of heaven because I spend all summer eating as many mangoes as I can to find the perfect mango. God help me if you left me alone <laughs> with all these mango trees because I don't know if you can see, but <clears throat> there's so many that they're just falling on the ground. Is that heartbreak? That's heartbreak right there. <laughs> Mango's on the ground, but this is the way it goes. It really they, is mango heaven. It's man, they've gone to heaven. They've gone. No, but they all, they're all ripening at once and they have to pick them green so that they don't squash on themselves in the packing containers, which means that by the time they've hit the ground, there's nothing they can do with them. So if they fall on the ground, that's it, they're done. They're too, done for. Too fat and juicy. Too fat and juicy. Look at this tiny one. Little tiny one. The baby mango. Um, yeah, but if they if they pick them when they're ripe, they're just too heavy on themselves and they squash and they end up. I want to show you a squashed one. No, I'll find standing you. One. I'll find you a smushed one. Do you should I try standing on this one. Uh, uh, no, can I explode? You do it. <laughs> so that is what they would do <laughs> if you pick them when they're ripe. So you got to pick them green. You got to pick them hard. Which leaves room for when they're on the shelves in the shops for people like me to be like, is this the perfect mango? Is it at perfect ripeness? The things that I have learned today about mangoes are in this red soil here in Jinjin, there's too much goodness for the trees. So they shoot up really, really tall and they grow very, very fast, which means that they have to keep taking the tops out of them and pruning them quite heavily so that they don't sort of overrun themselves. They take the middles out of the trees to try and let sunlight in so that the, the, so that the fruits ripen, but you don't want too much, otherwise the tree gets burnt. It's a bit delicate, a bit like the fruits. It's really hard to put sun cream on all of these trees. Too many trees to put sun cream on. Certainly I don't think they'd enjoy it. Oh, I thought you were going to say no again. This is just bursting out of me. Most people don't know that, have I gone, I've gone too serious. Most yeah. people don't know that, blah, blah, blah. All right, so the thing that's really astounded me today is that all the mangoes are harvested by hand and they have to be harvested by hand because when you pick them, this the little stem, when it's still greenish, starts letting off all this sap, which is acidic. And kills you. And, no, it doesn't kill you. I did ask oh. that question though. I was like, does anyone die from it? No, but it's acidic. When he, when he, was, saying, <laughs> he was saying this. He goes, we lost some pickers. And I went, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, tragic. S tragic, we lost some pickers. No, but some people can't can't actually pick them because the, as the acidity, the acidic nature of the sap reacts with their skin. They come out in hives. They have a they have a reaction to it. I've actually, we, we, we have a friend who can't have mangoes in the house because he has a reaction. Well, I, I do. My, my you friend. have a friend. Wait, he's not my friend? No. Michael, you're not my friend. Um, anyway, a friend of ours <clears throat> can't have them. Can have him. Michael, I take you as the friend. 
He can't have mangoes in the house because if he touches the skin or gets any of the sap on him, he has a reaction to them. He can eat mangoes, but he can't touch any of the outside. And John was saying that's because of this really acidic sap. And when they, when they pick them, if the sap gets on the skin and is left, the next day, the part of the skin that it touched will be all black and no good. It starts burning the skin straight away. So they wash them one at a time in a lightly soapy solution to neutralize the acid and stop it burning your beautiful mango so that when it gets to you, it's lovely and blushy and not all black and burnt. But we'll show you how that's done in a second. Won't we? I'm washing a mango, a precious, precious mango, to get the acidic sap off so that it doesn't burn them. I think I've ruined the whole box now because I've done it wrong. <laughs> Mom, you're putting me to work now. Do these hands look like they ever work? Oh, here they go. Right, I want the ones with the sticks though, because these ones don't have. You're gonna play this whole tray. I'm gonna do the whole tray. We'll be here a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm being overly careful with the mango. So again, here every... this one, this, this, this is my. This. Okay, so you break the stick off like that, and then the sap starts coming. And before the sap gets on it, you want to wash it. And nobody does it. Nobody takes this long to do it except for me. <laughs> and then, all right, should I leave it there, John, or should I put it in there? Well, I'll probably leave it in there. Leave it in. Just to be safe. Just to yeah. be safe. See, I'm doing it wrong. I'm ruining the whole box of mangoes. Um, this bin's got your name on it. What do you mean it's got my name on it? I think they put this here for you to fill up. I gotta fill that whole thing? Yeah. And then you can take a couple of Did you see me washing before? How slow I am? It's gonna take hours. Days, maybe. But, I'm sorry, I missed what you said. Did you say I could then take it home? Mm, or you could take a few home. A few. I'd do it for one mango. Look at this. You hold that one. That's the perfect one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shut. Do you know I've never done, I've never peeled a mango this way. Are you allowed to just eat it like that? John, can I eat one if I've found a perfect ripe one? Yes, but I'm going to have to give you some KP's so and taste a lot better. I'm going to try this one anyway. Okay. Just because adventurous, right? Do you know I've never peeled a mango like this? <laughs> I've only ever like sliced the cheek <laughs> off, yeah, yeah, and done the turning out. So I'm just going to, you ready? Bite it. Oh, ready? Oh my God. You should all just leave me here because it's going to get obscene. I'm just... Oh, it's so good. Does nobody else do this? <laughs> I can't. I couldn't wait for a knife. Well, you are good. Oh, I'm not the only one. Mighty hell, that's good. John showed me how he used to eat mangoes. Oh, no, I'll do it with this one. Eat mangoes in South Africa. I've never seen this technique, and I've seen a lot of mango technique, but this is, he reckons this is how they used to eat them in South Africa. So just squeeze, ah, and then you eat it like that. Ready? Oh yeah. And you just squeeze all the pulp out. Um. Ah. Mm -hmm. If you, oh my God. So we've got a juicy mango. It's like a zupa dupa. <laughs> <laughs> Better than a Zupa Dupa. Mm, and it just all squeezes out. So if you don't have a knife and you can't do your porcupine thing with the flipping the inside out, yeah. Look at that. Look!
we're in the packing shed. Welcome to the packing shed. Here are our crates, which we got while we're out in the field, and I filled one of these all by myself. Didn't I? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah. This one's mine. That's the one you're taking home. This is the one I'm taking home, so they better be super, super careful with these. So the process here is actually pretty amazing. They take these crates, they load them onto a forklift machine that lifts the crate up, tips it onto a conveyor belt, where it goes through this tunnel with more um, water spray that comes down onto the mangoes. I asked if they were being washed again, but they, they are, but they're being washed in a different solution this time to stop any mildew spots growing on them. So it's an anti-fungus, anti-mildew uh, solution that gets sprayed onto them. In that tunnel, it's 52 degrees, like a really warm bath for the mangoes. It just helps the process. And then when they come out the other end, because they're warm, they sort of dry off relatively naturally. They go through a tunnel, sort of being spun and rolled. They get to some polishing brushes, and they really do get spun around on the polishing brushes, which is great. And they go onto the sorting conveyor belt, where people stand again by hand and sort them into second grade, unsavable, and those beautiful first grade mangoes. And then James. And then James mangoes, because she picked whatever. Anyway, they keep going along and then they go up another conveyor belt and onto a grader for weight and size where they get spat out into the right baskets and then those baskets get packed again by hand. Again, there's so much hand work in this. Um, into their boxes and shifted off to stacking and covering and off they go. Wherever the shifties go. Wherever the shifties go. I'm exhausted just explaining that situation. Never mind the poor people that have to do it. But no, again... A shufti. It's shuft, like it's shufti. Shuft it off. Shuft it off. Is there a machine? For a shufti machine. I reckon the rollers that the boxes scoot along, which look like a roller coaster for the mangoes, that's the shufti machine. How good is it to be a mango? So good. You get hot, washed. No, no you get to live in Queensland in the sun. Live in Queensland in the sun. Nurtured, picked by hand, washed, polished, sent through a nice hot bath. Although it's a bit hot for that then polished dry and then hand packed. I love those mangoes. Oh, one last fun fact. They're still packed all green, like we talked about before, to keep them good for the shops. Then they get sent off to a gassing chamber, which sounds really sinister, but is not. And they get gassed with ethylene gas to, to make them ripen to the perfect stage of ripeness. Yeah, I wanted to be a mango until then. Until you got gassed. Until you got gassed. No, it just makes you more colourful, like, whee! Like colourful! Spray tan. <laughs> it's like spray tan for mangoes, but not. Zip. This is for Bob. Bob, this is your one perfect mango. I have it on good authority that in the next day or two this will ripen up gloriously yellow. It's an R2E2, which is Farmer John's favourite kind of mango. I just got to hand deliver it to you now. Not the R2D2. Not the R2D2, the R2E2 mango. Look how big it is! I just got to, are you going to come with me while I hand deliver this? I don't know, what if he doesn't like it and he just throws it and... And... You know how he is. More importantly, mangoes. more importantly, what if he's already had his one perfect mango this season? Oh, he can't do two. He can't do two. Does that mean I get to eat this one? Yeah, it's yours. It's coming, Bob. It's coming.